Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This is my second video on refrigeration system which is there on board ship. In the last video I have discussed about basics of uh, reverse Carnot cycle and standard vapor compression cycle which is used for refrigeration systems. In this video I will discuss about line diagram of refrigeration plant which is there on board ship. So friends uh, to keep learning please subscribe to my channel. Now let's begin with the video. So this is a line diagram uh, of the plant which is there on board ship. I will discuss about uh, the system, this line diagram in detail. As we can see the system contains two uh, plants parallelly for redundancy. Like uh, this is num one number one compressor, this is number two compressor. Similarly, this is number uh, one uh, condenser and this is number two condenser. So let's zoom this area and see what is there uh, in the compressor uh, and condenser plant unit which is there in uh, engine room. So as you can see, this is a compressor. This is the compressor. It takes suction from the line which is coming from the evaporator. This is the line which is coming from the evaporator. It takes suction and it discharge the refrigerant through oil separator and this oil separator returns back the oil to the compressor and the uh, refrigerant gas it's, uh, it sends to the condenser. This is the condenser. Now this condenser is cooled by the fresh water or center cooling fresh water which is provided which is there on board ship. This condenser is provided uh, with safety wall and the safety walls are connected through a pipe to the atmosphere. This is the line is connecting this uh, safety wall discharge to the atmosphere and this is a purging cock which is provided on the condenser. Now after uh, this refrigerant is cooled in condenser then it is sent through the uh, this filter and dryer and this side glass and then to the evaporator before evaporator it passes through this heat exchanger the importance of heat, heat this heat exchanger that I will uh, cover in detail in this uh, in this vid video this passes like this and this, this is the uh, liquid which is coming from the condenser and uh, this is the line this is the liquid which is coming from the evaporator so this this heat exchanger actually acts as subcooler subcooler So friends, uh, in this condenser, uh, this uh, filter, filter and dryer uh, unit, this unit, this, it also has one, uh, this uh, liquid charging connection. And I forgot to tell one more thing in compressor is that this is the uh, lube oil charging cock for the compressor. Now, uh, there are pressure switches or uh, controllers for operation of this compressor like this one this is for high pressure cutout and low pressure uh, switch for operation of this com uh, compressor plant or this refrigeration plant and this is this oil uh, lube oil pressure switch that in case of low, low lube oil pressure uh, it provides trip then we have differential gauge which is connected on the suction side which gives suction pressure and the lube oil pressure and then we have a discharge gauge on the discharge side. So this is uh, all about the condenser and the compressor unit which is present in the engine room. Now we'll see the plant again, we'll go back to plant again. Now this is the plant after we have reached this point after we have reached this point from here the refrigerant 
uh, goes to four chambers mostly on on board ship we have four uh, chambers one is uh, the meat room then we have fish room which are maintained at around minus 20 degrees and uh, we have dairy room and we have veg room this is the dairy room this is the veg room these are maintained at 4 to 5 degrees and this is the meat room and this is the meat room and this is the fish room they both are maintained at minus 20 degrees so from here the refrigerant goes to all the four compartments so this uh, meat room and fish room they actually are more, they more they both maintain minus 20 degrees celsius so i'll just discuss only one of the uh, one of the plant uh, oh, sorry one one of the room and veg room and uh, veg room and dairy room they both also are similar so i'll just discuss only one of them so after entering these uh, chambers they are again uh, returned back to the compressor through the subcooling heat exchanger so now let's discuss the meat room and veg room in detail so this is uh, the slide showing meat room and dairy room or veg room so it has uh, this uh, evaporator um, fan in both the case in, in both the room that uh, provides uh, air as a second cooling medium so first let me discuss this meat room because this is a normal uh, system which is there on all the refrigeration plants so refrigeration refri uh, refrigerant enters and it passes through a solenoid wall this is thermostatically controlled solenoid wall means that a thermostat is placed in the evaporator coils and as the temperature is reached this thermostatic uh, uh, solenoid wall it shuts and opens according to the temperature in the evaporator coils then it passes through the expansion wall this is the expansion wall and then it enters and then after that it is returned back to the uh, system so over here it has two manual uh, manual walls also for the isolation so that maintenance can be carried out and now let's go on to the uh, this uh, dairy room or veg room in this also uh, the refrigerant enters the system through the manual walls the then this thermostatically controlled solenoid wall then this expansion wall then after that it enters the evaporator coils and then again return back to the system but the main difference in these two systems is that in uh, dairy room or wedge room we have this constant pressure wall or back pressure wall but in the meat room or uh, fish room we have non only just non return wall these back pressure walls this back pressure walls or constant pressure walls they are actually spring loaded and maintains constant pressure inside the evaporator so uh, i will discuss two things in detail only uh, which provide which basically um, uh, provides this system uh, which which basically makes the system different from a single evaporator systems so let me discuss first about this back pressure wall this this back pressure wall this back pressure wall is actually a spring loaded non return wall it is fitted just at the exit of the uh, refrigerant from the evaporator whose temperature is to be set higher like suppose over here we have 4 to 5 degrees and in meat room and uh, fish room we have minus 20 degrees celsius so it is fitted on to the uh, this dairy room or and veg room the function of this wall is to maintain the equilibrium uh, of the system as the pressure of the gas at the exit of uh, each comp uh, sorry each compartment uh, differs so the veg room is maintained at temperature of 4 to 6 degrees celsius uh, while uh, this meat room and fish room is maintained at temperature of 20 to uh, 21 degrees celsius hence the flow of refrigerant in meat room and fish room is more as compared to veg room so this back pressure wall is fitted at uh, this uh, veg room or dairy room which will allow the refrigerant to flow 
uh, out only if the pressure inside the evaporator coil of wedge room is more than the pressure outside that is the pressure due to evaporated refrigerant of other two compartments that is the wedge room uh, sorry the fish fish room and the meat room so this is uh, the main function of back pressure wall that is to maintain this uh, wedge room and a dairy room temperature higher than the system evaporated temperature and which has more uh, more than one evaporators the uh, the importance of this uh, functioning of this uh, back pressure wall that i will also discuss uh, on the this uh, Mo molier diagram or molier chart now the other important thing is the heat exchanger that we have already discussed this heat exchanger this heat exchanger that we have already discussed this is sub cool sub cooling heat exchanger this uh, this the the uh, hot condensate liquid from the condenser can be utilized to superheat the cold vapors from the evaporator in the suction heat exchanger or this sub cool heat exchanger with two positive effects mostly it has two positive effects the first one is the higher level of sub cooling increases the evaporator capacity and uh, at uh, at the same time the superheating in the evaporator can be minimized because the suction heat exchanger ensures that uh, this uh, no heat enters the compressor this results in more efficient utilization of heating surface inside the evaporator so now let's see how this heat exchanger this uh, sub cooling heat exchanger and this uh, back pressure wall have effect on the uh, not not the effect is presented on the graph this molier molier graph which is uh, this pressure and enthalpy graph so this heat exchanger actually sub cools means that this three point it moves to sub cooled area and then it is expanded so this this much amount of refrigeration effect is increased by using this uh, this heat exchanger this sub cooling heat exchanger and this also increases this uh, superheating of the uh, vapors which are uh, produced in the evaporator so this this area this superheating is also increased by this sub cool sorry ha sub cool heater uh, this uh, uh, this back pressure expansion wall sorry this back pressure expansion wall actually uh, maintains a higher pressure in the meat room uh, sorry wedge room and dairy room so over here so like suppose this is the p of p condenser and this is p evaporator so intermediate this is p of wedge room or wedge room or dairy room so this pressure is maintained so what back pressure wall is wall, wall does it it after after this refrigerant reaches this vapor dome over here then it acts as uh, expansion wall i will say and it uh, drops to the uh, drops the pressure to evaporator the the system evaporator pressure and after after that this is heated in the sub cool sub cooled heater and it reaches the suction point it reaches this point which is the suction point for compressor so the two effects which is produced in the system one is the sub cooling which is this this effect and other is the uh, other is the maintaining different temperatures for uh, evap uh, this uh, meat room and uh, uh, meat room and wedge room that is one is maintained at minus 20 and one is maintained at minus uh, sorry plus uh, 4 to 5 degrees so this is how a multi evaporator system operates on board ship so thank you friends hope you have uh, enjoyed this video and uh, please subscribe to my channel till then have fun take care